Clive Barker's Undying is an often overlooked first person shooter written by Barker himself and released in 2001 for Microsoft Windows, developed by DreamWorks Interactive and running on the Unreal Engine. Set in the 1920s, it tells the story of a man named Patrick Galloway, who returns to a creepy estate in Ireland to help an old friend, Jeremiah Covenant, with a serious paranormal problem. Strange events began happening around the manor. It turns out that Jeremiah and his siblings dabbled around with the occult and got themselves into all kinds of shit. Now they've been reborn into evil apparitions and it's up to Patrick to stop them all, one by one, the only way he knows how. The story is broken up into roughly six or so chapters, with each one focusing on a particular member of the Covenant family. As you search for clues to their whereabouts before hunting them down and chopping off their goddamn head. There's a real Lovecraftian feel to the story and monster designs, and the underlying plot is all about interdimensional beings and alternate realities. The Unreal Engine does look a little bit dated, mostly due to the low polygon count for models, but the textures and lighting combined with the level design and music are still up to snuff, and do a good job of keeping in touch with the game's theme. Undying initially has a real horror film atmosphere. The mysterious phenomena occurring throughout the Covenant estate is downright unsettling. Out of your league, boy. And there's some really spooky, well-designed sequences that use the visuals to evoke a real sense of dread and fear. Apparitions appear in mirrors and paintings, and the distant sound of a rumbling thunderstorm serves to heighten the mood quite well. However, as you get further into the story, it just kind of dissolves into an action game with more of a focus on shooting. The mansion itself serves as something of a hub between chapters. As you return from a quest, new areas have been unlocked and you're given access to previously locked rooms and passageways. The mansion isn't exactly the safest place to hang out though and quite often you can be ambushed by monsters, so you're constantly on guard and ready for combat. Combat is broken up between weapons and spells, assigned to the player's left and right hand respectively. In Patrick's left hand he can use anything from a shotgun to a Molotov cocktail. Whilst in the right hand, he can select from a roster of offensive and defensive spells to aid further during encounters. These spells can include simple projectiles, through to protective shields, and even something called the Spirit Scry, which gives Patrick something akin to a sixth sense for a short period, allowing him to see events or elements within the game world he might not normally be attuned to. These spells can also be upgraded throughout the game through the use of something called amplifiers, Though there's not enough amplifiers to upgrade all the spells, so you have to be a little bit selective in this regard. Patrick can also store items within his inventory to aid him further, whether it be dynamite or health kits, or even spirit traps, which can be used to remove pesky apparitions that haunt him as he explores the estate. The weapons and spells are given to the player progressively as you make your way throughout the game, so you're always on the lookout. It should be said though that some of them do feel a little bit gimmicky, like the Tibetan War Cannon for instance. After you've gotten past the initial period of experimentation, you'll most likely never use certain weapons or spells again. Once you get a hang of the hotkeys, you'll be able to switch between different setups in the nick of time, which is extremely handy during fights. There's lots of depth and options left up to the player in terms of how they want to handle encounters. Using a shield and shotgun combo, for instance, can render you near invincible and allow you to move into point-blank range and decimate your enemies. Or you might want to use the pistol with one of the offensive spells like Skullstorm, launching explosive projectiles while swiddling down at enemies from a distance. By the time you've got Patrick's entire arsenal unlocked, you can pretty much annihilate anything that gets in your way, which is both a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing in the way that you become unstoppable and feel like a total Irish badass, but then it's a curse in the way that the game loses every iota of tension and suspense, as everything that comes for you is pretty much obliterated in a heartbeat. Now, there isn't really anything outright wrong with Undying. I mean, in terms of a shooting game, it functions well enough, and the combat system is easy to pick up despite being a little bit repetitive. The biggest issue is that the game is very story-driven, and if the story isn't your cup of tea, then it's not gonna be very engaging, there's not much variety in the enemy types either. Most enemies will simply fire slow moving projectiles at you from a distance or beeline towards you for a melee attack, giving you a massive window of opportunity to kill them. 
On the off chance that you were hit and take a little bit of damage, you can pretty easily patch yourself up with one of the two dozen health kits you have saved in your inventory. Boss fights are thrown in here and there to add a certain semblance of challenge, and though they do focus around a certain pattern or strategy, it's often painfully obvious what that is, meaning the fight is often over as quickly as it started. At the end of the day though, I wouldn't really have any hesitation recommending Undying to anyone interested in first person shooters. It offers some genuinely scary moments and it has really satisfying combat, combined with a rich story and a cinematic soundtrack. The best version of the game at the moment is the one being sold on goodoldgames.com. It runs pretty flawlessly on modern rigs and has very few, if any, compatibility issues or bugs. And for its dirt cheap price tag, you sure could do a hell of a lot worse. Thank <laughs> you.